Hello, everybody, and welcome once again to another exciting episode of The Push. I'm Dom Mallon, one of your co-hosts, along with the boss slash jefe of Bodyslam.net, the boy himself, Mr. Cassidy Haynes. Hey, buddy. Hello again. What's up, This dude? evening. Hello, Let's hello. Again. So, uh, yeah, so we're, we're here. Uh, we're doing this as a uh, as a shout out to our buddy uh, Nick Opaluski and Nick. I I apologize if I am screwing up your last name, but we debated how to say it for a good bit, so we hope we got that right. Nick, uh, Nick's a good a good friend, fan of the show, and we wanted to do this just for him. He had a request for us, so this tonight's episode is just for you, buddy. So we uh, we we got into this doing weekly Halloween Havoc watch alongs, uh, mm-hmm. which is why we originally were here tonight. We were going to. We were going to record our most recent winner, WCW Halloween Havoc 1992, uh, but we had a little technical difficulties, and it's late at night, and I do yeah. not feel like jumping into a three-hour pay-per-view at 1 a.m. when I got to get up. That's my bed. No, no, it's cool, but it gives us an opportunity to to do this uh, special request from Nick, and if any of the listeners that are watching along or listening along have special requests as well, we're happy to take them. Uh, you can reach out to us yeah. on Twitter at uh, Body Slam underscore Pod, which is where we're at most of the time. You can also catch us on our individual Twitters. Uh, I am at Dom underscore Malon, M A L L O N. You can also catch Cass at C A S S H O O O L E. And wherever it is down here, I'm trying to do the whole like, hey, it's down here, like, you know, wherever the title thing is, whatever that is. Uh, that's for the people that are watching us on YouTube, which you can yeah. also, if you're listening on any podcast platform, you can also catch the, the video as well as the audio on YouTube. Uh, but there's one more, one more Twitter that I want to plug and it's the big kahuna itself. Ooh. Body slam net. Uh, yeah, get that in there. So that is, uh, yeah. those are all the places that you can vote for our weekly watch alongs that we do uh, throughout the month of October for WCW Halloween Havocs. And that's where you can also reach out to us if you want to have any special requests like Nick did. The re- and what? just keep just keep up with what we're doing, man. That's how you can find all of our good stuff, stuff you might have missed and what we're going to be doing. And just that's the best way to interact with us, man. Facebook, Twitter. Dude, like we said, are... Nick got us on Facebook. But, yeah, dude, Twitter, man. Let's – Get us we out are, there, guys. Talk to us. We, got we are uh, we are content whores, man. Do you realize since we started this show, we've been averaging an episode like every other day, like just over every two days, like two point like two days we put out a show. This is episode sixteen, and right. Yeah, and it's October. Well, technically October sixteenth right now in the early morning, and we started on. <laughs> Not not intentionally, but we started on September 11th. We're taking that day back. That's uh, that's us now. That's our day. <laughs> it was it was unintentional, but yeah, we're we're gonna try to make the most of it. But if you quantify it, we've been doing this for just over a month, and we have just half a month's worth of uh, about numbers. two shows a week. Looks like about two shows a week. All right, so we got we got 15, 16 shows in 30 something odd days, and yeah, I mean. It is what it is, dude. Nothing wrong hey, with that. No, I'm not complaining. I'm, I'm, and I'm not patting ourselves on the back either. But my whole point to this is, we are happy to take requests. Yeah, so, man, I'm liking. I'm enjoying this. I'm loving doing this. So definitely, watch alongs are fun, man. And and Nick had such a cool request because it's it's not like a like a pay per view that we've seen a bunch of times or or anything like that. It was a random episode of an old WWF superstars. Hey. 46 minute and 23 second episode of superstars we can bang that out i'm excited about it i have no idea what's on this card a, we didn't look it up we're going in blind i didn't look it up did you look it up i had the description up but i'm afraid that if i touch anything on my phone it's gonna i'm not gonna it touch up. the thing because i screwed this up last time touching stuff but i'm going in blind i know that it says on mine that king of the ring qualifying matches continue as razor ramon clashes with el matador that would be tito santana mm-hmm uh tension rise between Shawn michaels and mr perfect during their interview and that's as far as i got because okay. it's just ellipses out for me and i can't see anything past that so that's okay. the description i have that's the the gist of it and we are at for the date because i don't think we've said it yet we're at may 8th 1993 yeah may 8th, 93 superstars 
So this is going to be fun. Like you said, we're going into it a little blind. And usually for these early 90s cards, I lean on you for the, the knowledge. But that's because we usually are going into WCW territory. So we're in what otherwise should be my area of expertise, but it's it predates my knowledge. I might surprise you, though, because these guys have all had some WCW history for the most part, I think, in 1993. You know what I mean? At least they came at one point in or out of it or went to it later. So I, I, I could probably do something with this. But And I was watching wrestling at this time. This was I was 10 years old. I, I followed this. But it just was harder for me to find because Superstars was a Saturday morning thing, but it was never on at the same time for some reason on my USA Network. It would be like they, they always had something else like weird going on in the morning and it would either be at like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, sometimes one in the afternoon. So I was like, I, I never could really keep track of when it was on. All right. So let's get into it. Uh, we can we can count it down. Are you drinking a Coke? I'm also drinking a Coke. Look at us. Hey, shame Look at us. Plugs. Sponsors. They're big fans. They're not sponsors yet, but they are big uh, fans yeah. of the they show. They are big fans. They, yeah, this is true. So, you know, we'll get right. we'll get there. My controller has not gone dead yet, so I can we can do this countdown and start it up whenever you're ready. Everybody's right. ready to go. May 8th, 1993. Superstars. I'm fucking psyched. Let's do this, bro. Right, Count down. A mouth on you. Five, four, three, two, one. Hit it. Oh, we're rolling. We got this. We're all it's I know you how much you love these nine these early Ooh. graphics to enter. Ooh, boss man Kamala slapping stomachs. Luger out there, Papa Shango. There's a lot going on in this intro. Damn, Young look Undertaker. at this. Look at this cast in '93. Tatanka out there being somebody. It's literally going. I too saw fast the Beverly the Brothers. Well, there's going. Owen, the Rocket. There's his early stuff, or not early stuff, but I guess is when he was not being part of the Heart Foundation, breaking away. It's going too fast for me to be able to name all the people that were just mentioned there. That are. I, I saw. Awesome. I got tried to keep up. There was. I saw the Beverly Brothers, which. Anytime Mike Enos can get uh, some TV time along. So we're we're in we're in Tucson, Arizona at the convention center. Oh look at this green screen magic. I know, right? With or blue actual... screen at this point. Would it be blue screen at this point of the year? So mm -hmm. we're we're at the point in WWF where Hulk Hogan is still there, but they're phasing him out trying to go with that new era where it looks like Shawn Michaels is is taking the helm. And Macho Man is is getting squeezed on the commentary. Yeah, this is where they didn't, they didn't have faith in his time, or him being able to uh, wrestle anymore, right? Because Macho know, Man actually went to WCW first, didn't he? Macho you know, Man went later this year because he was doing raw commentary, and then I know that I think he goes first, and Hogan follows him, right? It kind of sounds like it's. It depends on who you ask, as far as the the whole situation with Macho Man on commentary, because. Bruce Pritchard, who obviously will take the, the company stance, but, you know, he made it sound like Macho Man was constantly going back and forth about whether he wanted him and Miss Elizabeth in the ring at all later in his career. And, you know, he said that, yeah, he would go through stints where he wanted to be in the ring, but he would also go through stints where he would say the injuries are catching up with him and he really didn't Wait. want to take the toll. Look at this coming. Sorry to interrupt you. Look at this coming out. Are you kidding me? Money Inc. with Mr. Hughes, Curtis Hughes. Shout out to the WWA Ford uh, training facility, which he founded, but now run by AR Fox, Danny Jordan, which we interviewed, trained at. That's awesome. Tied it in. Yeah, cause remember, I asked her if Curtis Hughes was there when she started, and he had just left, and I guess let AR Fox take over. So, but yeah, Curtis Hughes trained, what, uh, Heath Slater at that program, at that school in Atlanta? All types of people came out of there. But look at this, man. Urban R. Scheister. Mike Rotunda, or is it Rotundo? Buddy, Rotunda. you're going to have to tell me because the exact same thing just freaking happened to me. I lost my uh, my Chromecast, just went off on me. So we need to pause this. No, just keep going, keep it rolling. You talk, you I'll catch, catch up, up to you. Here. Yeah. All right. You, you tell me when. I'll tell you what the time step is, and you can catch up. Nasty boys are coming out. Brian Dobbs and Jerry Sags right now. With uh, is Jimmy Hart with them? I didn't see. No, nope, no Jimmy Hart. They're by themselves. God damn nasty boys. Man, Hulk Hogan made sure to get Knobs a job. Hmm. Hogan had a lot of people get getting uh or getting jobs for a lot of people back then. 
They ever tell you about Brian Knobs trying to bang my ex-fiance's grandmother? Uh, I don't know if you told me about that one. She was super old. Not like it wasn't like she was young, dude. She was in like a wheelchair. Oh my god. Yeah, I'll go into that story in detail later. That's not uh, one for. That's one when we need more time. Yeah, it sounds like <laughs> <laughs> Kamala coming out, man. R.I.P. My man Kamala. I got a Kamala action figure over here somewhere, but if I pull it out, I'm afraid the whole thing will fall apart. I was a big Kamala guy. He was scary. What are you up to on time? Uh, we are at four minutes and four seconds. I stopped it. Pause for four. Track it. We stopped it at 404. Everybody make sure we're caught up. Get as close to it as you can there and let me know when to go. Uh, let's see here. Man, those Nasty boy shirts were um, busy. They're very uh, colorful. Sorry about the delay, guys. It's all right, dude. It happens. Nobody. It, it, it happens to the best of them. All right. This happened the other day to everybody else. So we're gonna. You're at four oh four. Yeah, at four oh four. Are you at four oh four? Yeah, and we're gonna count it down from five. And five, four, three, two, one. Hit it! All right. Kamala's in the ring now. We got Ted DiBiase and IRS. Mr. Hughes. So it's a six-man, I guess. The Nasty Boys and Kamala mm -hmm. against IRS and Mr. Hughes. Mr. Hughes is part of the Million Dollar Corporation or whatever this was, right? Yeah, he had a lot of people in there <laughs> over the years. I mean, Tatanka was in there at one point. Uh, Crush was in there at one point. Stone Cold? Yeah. When he was the ringmaster, though. So, no, Stone Cold wasn't. The right. ringmaster was. He basically left. <laughs> he basically, well, no, because he, he had left uh, Money Inc. He, he, he had dropped that shit in right. Stone Cold on his own, yeah. But it wasn't like in the same night. When no. he won King of the Ring, he had already dropped that, that, uh, that affiliation. Yeah, the ringmaster gimmick, which was. Fucking stupid. So, Mr. Hughes and Kamala. <coughs> Is that All Danny right. Davis in the ring? All Dangerous right. Danny Davis referee in this match, too. R.I.P. Kamala. I got him as one of my little figures. Yeah, I got From him. Micro Brawlers. Oh, he's back here. I'm pointing to him. I'm always his head. I'm always afraid to grab one of these guys because I feel like it's just going to knock over all of them. I was about to pull Kamala out, but he's on the back row. Back there with Roddy Piper and uh, Brock and Kurt Angle and Farouk. And if I pulled them out, I was crazy. Everything was going to fall down. How many of those do you have? Thunder Rosa was so uh, – when we interviewed her, she was so, like, taken aback by how many we had collectively. Dude, I don't even know. Like, it starts over there, and there's a bunch hidden behind that. Yo, I got that same Andre. I got the same Andre the Giant that you do. Nice, dude. I don't even know which one that is. It was just – I don't even – it was just, just loose. I don't know. I got it in the – I think eBay or the wrestling can show, you know what I mean? Like a loose box or something where it's just like buy shit. And right. I so no look at this. Look at this. So we have, we have Ted DiBiase trying to buy off Kamala. I mean, I think it's a good deal. What's it? Slick likes it. What's he going to do with, what's he going to do with cash? He's going to give it to Slick. Slick? Slick likes money. Slick likes money. What? Slick. Oh, come on, Slick. Slick tells him yeah. to attack and puts the money in his pocket. Slick's oh, see, dirty. that's that's not right. Well, that's Slick did that. He's Slick. That's true. He is Slick. That's pretty Slick on him. I'll get it on Oh, uh, Uganda and Giant patting his belly. Doesn't that give face. you hope? Like, even we could be pro wrestlers if we just went back in time. <laughs> back then, it didn't take anything but a good gimmick. You didn't have to look good. Man, look at the bodies. Of, like, IRS is stacked. Even even Ted DiBiase at this point, like it's not like he's not in shape. He's definitely in shape, but it's not like he's got some. He's not well defined at all. He's right. very like forty year old. He's probably what early forties right here or late thirties right here. As they're pushing Ico Pro as like the top sponsor. <laughs> Man, remember those days? 
<laughs> no, nah, I predate them. No, they predate me. Man, you don't even remember when uh, they did the – we did that IBF. No, uh, not, I don't remember. Yeah, I don't. That was heavy at the Iker Pro time where he was pushing the, the International Bodybuilding Federation and his Iker Pro. See, it's funny. I remember it being on, but I, that's the thing. It's all flash memory stuff when we're going back this far. I remember being interested in it and seeing all of it, but not nearly enough to be able to pull back memories and dates and stuff like that about it. Like I would be able to from 98, 99 on, you know? See, I remember when IRS was before he got here, he was WCW, big, uh, the varsity club. So we would have seen a little bit of that. Or Michael Wall Street, we would have seen him in that 1990 Halloween Havoc that I was wanting to watch. Oh. Oh, no, the pit. Oh. Oh. All right, so now a word from our sponsors. And we're back. And we're back. That would have been a good time to take a break and plug our sponsors, which, if you're interested in being a sponsor of the Body Slam podcast, The Push, feel free to reach out and contact us. We are always looking for sponsors. Did you forget the name of our show as you were trying to get sponsors for our show? Were you, were you pulled, stalling for a, a second? U. I pulled a U and <laughs> <laughs> forgot what I was saying and got derailed like a son See? of a bitch. It's not, it's not so easy, is it, big guy? Definitely not good to do to call me out on that when I'm trying to <laughs> get us some podcast some podcast sponsorship to be like, hey, you can't even plug our show. How are you going to plug a sponsor? Dude, I'll be honest. I'm not, I'm not going to be like, oh, I hate money, but – I love I, money. I I, I I agree. I, if somebody wants to pay me to do this, that'd be amazing. But I just have fun doing this. I love just interacting with the people that like listening to us. Yeah, man, we got some good fans, man. We, I'm, we, we were very young, but we've got some really cool fans that have been following us. I really appreciate them. And even just hearing the feedback, like even, even, with Nick, even like you, it made my day when you texted me and you were like, Hey, this guy, Nick hit me up and wants us to do a, uh, a specific episode. I was like, hell yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. He's like, do you guys do requests? I was like, of course we will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So thank you, Nick, for this. And, and again, anybody who wants to, who, who listens, who, who wants us to, to do a watch along of anything specific again, you know, let us know, hit us up on Twitter. Or Facebook. That's where Nick found me. Right, right. Or Facebook. See, I'm not on Facebook, so I always forget that. But yeah, we were we got a Facebook page for the for the podcast. There's two Facebook pages for the website. We've got a, a big page and then a backup page. I think Nick found the backup page. But however you find us, find me, message me, let me know. Do it. Well, we're out there, man. Oh man, IRS putting work in, man. I don't, I'm not a big nasty boys guy. You know, I, I never really was either. I liked uh, I liked interacting with them at the hotel bar after WrestleCon for WrestleMania in Dallas. But as far I'm as I'm sure, Nob, Nobs loves the bar, bro. But yeah, as far as the wrestling goes, I I agree. I, I told you he tried to bang my ex fiance's grandmother when she was in a wheelchair. He was fucking wasted. Is a Christmas party. Why were you at a Christmas party with? I wasn't. She, my fiance, ex fiance, called me. So she lived. Her family was well off, like very, very prominent down in Florida. And they lived in the same neighborhood as Hulk Hogan. Her okay. uncle did. So her uncle and Hulk Hogan were like neighbors. And Nobs, of course, was in the neighborhood. So Hulk Hogan was there at this house, at this Christmas party for with my aunt, with my ex fiance. Her uncle was through there at their at their family was all down there for Christmas. And Nobs was there. Hogan was there. Oh. The uncle, everybody. So she just calls. But she would call me all the time and be like, listen to this. And just, like, play the voicemail on the answer machine. Because it was answer machine days, you know? Right. Be, like Hulk Hogan calling her uncle. Be like, Howard, brother, you want to go to the gym? That's pretty oh, cool. Shit, that's so cool. Yeah. Did you ever meet Hogan? No, that bitch never took me to Florida. What the fuck, right? <laughs> Should have stuck it out. <laughs> I I'm kidding. I definitely stuck it out, my man. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Well, we can get into that. That's a that's a that's an episode right there. If you want to get into <laughs> that bullshit, I definitely did my sticking it out for the for the cause. How about how about Kamala trying to get that super kick going and got? How like, about Kamala trying to pin him upside down? Oh, he doesn't know any better. I love that kid that had the old school Pearl Jam with the uh, the straw man logo. I love this. On it. I love Kamala not understanding awesome. how to. I love Kamala understanding how to pin. There it is again. You see that? 
I'm busy watching Kamala be confused with how to pin. It was on and they screen. Were like, Hook the they... leg. Oh no, Kamala got outsmarted. Oh. And they win. There it is. He was confused. To anybody listening, if you have that old school Pearl Jam straw man shirt, <coughs> seek me out. I will pay for a large or XL or a medium. It'll inspire me to lose weight. Have you ever been on the Google? Have you ever checked the Ebates? Honestly, yeah, every once in a while I do, but it's uh it's like this McFoley uh cactus jack shirt. It's uh it's hard to get. Is it a unicorn? Is it the holy grail of band shirts? That's why I'm I'm pleading out to the audience, please seek me out and gouge me for it. Oh, we're going to Mean Gene at those at the control center, it looks like. That's an interesting set stage set up there for Gene. It looks he's got like the WWF jacket. Oh, he's doing a face to face here. We got Mr. Perfect and the Heartbreak Kid. That control Shawn center. Michaels. That control center looks like it's a airbrushed curtain, which is awesome if that's what it is. That was definitely what that was. That was definitely an airbrushed curtain. You can see the wrinkles in it. Yeah, it's pretty sweet though. I mean, it's got a little green screen right there for him. Uh huh. I love these graphics. I wish they would bring this back every day. Like, it's the kind of can't be like. It's the stuff they do at Southpaw. Do you not watch any of that Southpaw? I know, but that's such a. You got to, like, get better. I'm talking about doing this on Raw, doing this on SmackDown, and, like, making it look, look at, campy, but in the. Look cool at way. all that earrings. You know, they actually did that a, a little bit, uh, maybe like five or six years ago. I noticed they would, they would have, like, old school style cutback corner interviews. Uh, and I kind of liked that. I thought it was a cool way to quickly get people over and it was also like a nod back to the way they used to do these interviews did uh you see mr perfect's tie look at that <coughs> man look at that tie bro it's pretty mr. Sweet. perfect mr perfect shirt's not even like starched it's like all like fucking wrinkled and shit what's up I'm, with that i'm colorblind is that black and red the tie it's black with like purple, flowery kind of, and it kind of fades to like a peach color, or like an orange. Oh, really? I'm kind of colorblind too, so it could be fucking nothing close to that for all I know. I'm like moderately colorblind with some things. Uh, you know, I'm only with specific colors, and yeah. honestly, that's the the color blend that those those those, those get me. I'm good with those. Those those I'm good with. But I will say that his shirt definitely needed to be ironed and starched. Mr. Perfect, I'm disappointed in that. <laughs> that shirt is not perfectly pressed. <laughs> it's such, an, it's oh. such an easy thing to have a, be perfect that you just overlook. <laughs> it's, how do you overlook? It's like me. He's out there looking like me. Sloppy as fuck right now. Hair looking on point, but look at that shirt. Mean Jean's shirt looks better than that. Look at that. Well, I mean, that's no surprise to anybody. Mean Gene is just a king among men. Well, Mr. Perfect, things are supposed to be perfect, and that is – Shawn Michaels needs to be talking shit about that shirt. I think his tie's all crooked, too. Everything about his setup tonight is a little, a little sub-perfectness, a little below par. I don't know, man. Maybe you're hating. Maybe it's just the camera angle. He is Mr. Perfect. <laughs> Maybe it was uh, maybe it was the work of Shawn Michaels just uh, behind Sabotaging. the scenes. Sabotaging. Yeah. Shawn Michaels banged the the chicken wardrobe, and she gave a dirty shirt. I, it could happen, but who's coming? Somebody's coming. Is this the new Blackjacks? This is the smoking guns, brother. Oh, the new yeah. What did I say? The new Blackjacks. Yeah, this is no. That's that's when Bradshaw was a black jack bradshaw and the other one was black jack Wyndham, right yes exactly yeah you're yeah. right sorry i got no, lost this in is, this this is the is first the, time that i've seen billy Gunn's like debut promo vignettes wow are you excited for I his am. debut now there you go here's billy Gunn. you see sean dakota is out there tonight He's a I have a Billy Gun. It's in the box over there, though. I almost pulled it out and put it up, but in my uh, in my chronological rewatching of the Attitude Era, I'm at King of the Ring '99, which oh, look at spoiler. This. Well, I won't spoil it, but Billy Gun is involved. <laughs> look what's coming to the ring here. This is one of my favorites. Yeah, I'm glad that he's involved in this card. 
My man, look at this. Your boy. You like the big guys. Yeah, I was a big guy. So now he's not holding the title at this point, though. Is that is Hogan holding the title? Uh, or Bret Hart. <laughs> or it could be Diesel for all I know at this point, man. It's 1993, but he gets it soon after, soon not too long after this. This is his like when they're just feeding him jobbers to squat to make him like look just unstoppable, which he was. I thought it was crazy how they would say, like, backstage they would need to actually move him with a forklift at certain points just because of how much fluid he had. It, there was at one point where I think he got sick and he was, like, retaining fluid. And when they had to do whatever they had to do to get it taken out, that he lost, like, 20 pounds, like, immediately. Like, he had to be, like, bedridden because of it because he lost so much weight so quickly. Yeah, didn't he go away for a little bit to go get better and then, like, went to Duke or something and then came back and, like, lost some weight, but he just couldn't control his eating? I th possibly, but – and I know that was a big part of it, but I think specific to what I'm talking about, I think it was, like, some kind of infection or, or something where he was, like, he was unable to just release fluid. Like, he was just retaining too much fluid. So it wasn't that he was – gaining weight naturally it, as much as it was because honestly he doesn't look awful there if you think about it yeah he's a big guy but it's not like he looks like he's unable to walk when you yeah. consider the fact that he's wearing no he uh, was good in the ring dude so i don't understand how like i don't know that whole like, i've never heard that they had to move around the forklift i've never heard that that's what I'm saying. I think it was specific to a certain period in time where he got sick and it was some kind of sickness where he, he was just not able to like just naturally pass weight like anybody would. And I think he had to have, like, some kind of surgery for it. I could be wrong, and maybe I'm mixing up stories. Well, I know he left for a little bit. Remember, I just said he left for a little bit and went to do to do to get some procedure done because he was having a hard time with his eating. But I thought it was more or less, like, maybe that, maybe that's the same thing. You know what I mean? Right. Maybe our stories are both a little confused, but they're the same story. <laughs> I'm pulling but, back. I thought I heard Con – or, uh, yeah, Conrad and, and – uh, Bruce Pritchard talking about that on their show. Probably, but, man. I haven't heard it. I, who I, is I this in the ring with him? Sean Dakota, jobber. Okay. Oh, I missed that. What did the graphic come up? Is that when you said that? Yeah, when you were Billy gunning me up, I was like, Sean Dakota. Oh, here we see, go. Watch this. Leg drop. He got up pretty high for that. Dude, see, he gets around, man. So. Yeah. Yeah, Hogan's still holding that belt. Look at him. But Bret Hart's right there. Well, no, WrestleMania was when the Hogan, Bret Hart, Yokozuna shit happened, right? That, that was WrestleMania 9? And that was 93, wasn't it? Yeah. You're that was two right. months ago. So what happened? Not even. Yokozuna. That would have been like more like a month ago because we're in the beginning of May, and that would have been the beginning of April or like the very end of March, right? Yeah, so like a month. Eh, I split the difference, month, month and a half. Man, Yokozuna was fun to watch. Here goes a bonsai squash, boom. See, he's running fast right there for a big dude. Yeah. I was thinking, that's got to hurt. That's got to hurt a lot. He's even big. if you're like, if you even if you're trained to take it. Uh, you can just throw there this it guy down. He's going to sit on his face and squish him. God damn it. If you had to take either this, oh. Never. Oh, my God. That looked like it hurt. Did you see how this just crushed, like, that guy's chest? How did you, Like, how do you – when he sits on you like that, how do you take that? That's uh, so much weight. What yeah. do you think he weighs there? 500. You think he's, you think he's 500 there? Yeah, 450, 500 easy. That's what I mean. To have 450 pounds. If we had the volume there. on, it would have said so when he came out of the ring right. when he was weighing. But to have 450 pounds just sitting on your chest like that, and I know, like, yeah, you exhale and you just kind of cave yourself in, but to have him sitting there like that for that long has got to feel like forever when you just can't inhale at all. Well, him having his feet on the mat probably took a little bit of the weight off, so it's probably, like, not the entire weight, but it's not going to help that much. You know what I mean? It's not like his feet were supporting any of that weight when he had his ankles on or his heels on the mat when he was sitting on the guy's chest. Yeah, true. But, like, 
that like that didn't hurt because he does such a good job like keeping it's his like leg up. Dude, that right there. Yeah. Maybe it's he holds on to the ropes so much. Maybe he's still holding on to the ropes when he hits on your chest. I wasn't watching. Maybe that's how he keeps from hurting. But right there, he's just sitting on you. He's a big dude. He was awesome. You know what I oh, noticed? Look at this. They got Tanya. rid of they got rid of superstars like two weeks after this. Really? Yeah, there was. Uh, I think like the twenty fifth or something was the the last episode. I don't think they got rid of superstars. It's just all that they have on the network. I wish I had Slim Jims right now. I got all these snacks for Halloween. Watch. I don't. I don't think this is the last that they they still make superstars, or they still did superstars up until whenever, like not but too I long ago. The last of like this era. Yeah, they don't have him. They, they just haven't put it up. I think they they kept it on TV through like the mid to late nineties. Oh, okay. It's just really? wasn't. It's just not on the network. That's weird. Uh, yeah, like they the same way the WCW Saturday Night's not on the network past '93 either. Right. I wonder and if it's it, the kind of thing where they got to do like re-editing or reformatting, and it just takes time. Or the, yeah, and they're just releasing it in stages. But like WCW Saturday Night kept running through into the series run. Like it was still going on in 2000. And they don't have any of those on here either. Right. Yeah. WWF Championship at King of the Ring: Hulk Hogan versus Yakuzuna. So I guess Hogan's got it. Mm-hmm. Hogan get it back. Did he beat somebody at the end of the night? Yeah, because Brett beat Yokozuna, and then Hogan came in and won, right? Or was that, that – Yokozuna that cheated and threw salt. I think it Mr. Fuji might have thrown salt in Brett's eyes. Hogan came down to, like, defend Brett, and Brett was like, oh, you take my place, and you be the champ. And Hogan beat Yokozuna in, like, two seconds. Yeah. I hate Hulk Hogan, bro. But you love Hollywood, Hulk Hogan. Fuck yeah, dude. Hollywood's a damn national treasure. <laughs> Big fact. It's funny. My neighbor, who's still my neighbor to this day, uh, because I moved into taking over my grandparents' house, and uh, she, she still lives there. But even ever, ever since I was little, she loved Hulk Hogan. And she – when – Hulk Hogan moved to WCW. She wasn't aware of it. So she thought he was off TV. And so I was like, you know, he's still on TV. You just have to turn on to like TNT and watch wrestling there. And she was like overjoyed to know that he was still on TV and could watch him. What you think of the, uh, the infamous leg drop turn heard around the world. Look at this. Is this, all American Lex Luger or the Narcissist Lex Luger? I didn't see what we got. This is all Oh, American. this is the Narcissist. This is Narcissist? Are you Look sure? at him. Look at how he's talking. Look at his gear. It's not red and white and blue. It's yeah. silver and gold. And he's talking about his – I think he's talking about his perfect body and his face. Didn't, uh, didn't the All-American come first, though? No. Oh, Okay. No, no, no. They repackaged him. He disappeared off TV, and they repackaged him and made him come back. Oh, to, uh, oh Papa Shango. Look at that. I got him on my shirt, too. Look, boom. Nice. I got him in uh, behind me. Typhoon oh, versus Bam, Bam Bam. Bam Bam. I got Bam Bam right here. And this is tonight, El Matador. I never, I never liked Tito Santana. I'm like Jesse Ventura. I didn't like Tito Santana. I'm going to start calling him Chico the whole time. That'll be my honor of Jesse Ventura. I'm calling him Chico Santana the entire time. <laughs> you remember those old, like, old, old, like, WWF pay-per-views when Jesse Ventura was on commentary? Uh-huh. Like, in the 80s? You ever uh-huh. ever watch those? Uh-huh. He's just always shitting on Tito Santana every time right. he's in the ring. I got a Tito Santana uh, pin. It's, like, one of the first ones I got in the uh, pro wrestling crate. It's actually pretty cool. It says, Arriba, Santana. Who's this coming to the ring now? Crush. Maybe this one is from Hawaii. Crush is from Hawaii? Yeah, this version of him was. <laughs> Where'd he relocate to after he was in Hawaii? I don't know. He was, was he like Newark? Was, he was – this is after he left Demolition. Uh-huh. Remember when he was in Demolition when they brought him as the third member of Demolition? hmm And then they repackaged him from uh, – now he's from Hawaii right here. And then I think when he comes back, he's just like a motorcycle rider. So he's from like the Hills Angels or wherever they're from, you know, like the streets or like fucking, I don't know. But yeah, this is definitely. What a weird turnaround. 
to be like the Hawaii like what's up, brah? To, Jonah uh, Crush. That's why he's doing this. Why are you doing this? Yeah. 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 So, see. I like the yeah. tights though. I don't. They're pretty like fucking the terrible. It's pretty fucking terrible, my man. <laughs> you and I are like <laughs> It's very nineteen ninety three. See, I, I love live, that though. I, I live through this. See, I remember as far as culture goes, like I remember I was old enough to remember things happening. I just can't remember specific episodes of TV shows, but I love that early 90s, like the neon windbreakers and like the star yeah. jackets. I love that kind of look. Yeah, they're coming back. Fanny packs. Check out that guy's cowboy boots that are wrestling boots. Is this guy, is that Damien, is that Damien King, King or what, the guy that ended up in the ECW? What did they say this guy's name was? You're talking about the other guy in the ring? Jobber. And Bill Alfonso's the referee, by the way. Oh, my God. Yeah, you're right. I didn't even notice him until uh... – Alfonso's the ref. But I'm pretty sure that guy might be – this guy might – the guy in the – that is getting just squashed, I think, had an ECW run or two there. He's just a little short guy. He wore a leather jacket, and he had a chick that came out with him. I think it was Damian – King or Damian King? We're Facebook buddies. I'm pretty sure that's him, dude. It looks just like him. He's short. He didn't change his look. Three years at two years after this, he's in ECW doing like something at night. It makes sense that Fonzie's there too. You know what I mean? Dude, I love when they cut back to the audience. This was his finisher. Remember this? Where he squeezed you from the head and then just just Pick keep you squeezing up. your head. I love when they cut to the audience and just seeing the hair, like the hairstyles and the the, the way people were dressing and stuff. The way people look back then, it's such a time. That's the thing. That's the time machine is looking at the way all the people in the audience look. Yeah. Man. He's still doing the, like, surfs up, like, rock, like Hawaiian hand signal. Yeah, look at this. Yeah. So that's interesting. Yeah, so there's that that we were just talking about on the cover of the magazine they just showed up there. Gorilla. Gorilla's wearing that makeup, too. It looks like he just saw the mortician. Jesus Christ. So, Sherry, I think, is involved in tonight's episode. I don't know if Luna is. This is right before Sherry made that jump to WCW, too. Mm. Dude, this is probably right before a lot of people. If, you're, if you're, your time frame for right before is like six months, eight months. Yeah, within the year is what I'm saying, like – She's so, not – here you go. They're, they're recapping, the door here. They're recapping WrestleMania 9 now. So. Man, Luna, man, Luna, she is a wild-looking thing, huh? She looked like she was – she could have been fun too back in the day. You know, it's a shame that Luna didn't really get the, uh, the kind of push that – they're the national push on WWF television that she could have. I mean, she really could have done a whole lot more during – not not by any fault of her own, you know. They could have done a lot more with her, I should say, during a time. She, it was just a terrible time period because it was all bra and panties matches in WWF at the time, and she definitely wasn't that. Right. That's so what she I was didn't have a place. At, yeah. yeah, she was in the wrong era. Now, like God she's damn, getting into it that, now, man. Look at this. Way, yeah, I mean, same for Sherry Martell, man. Right, very true. And Medusa, they say that a lot. And Medusa, her. Sherry Martell, Medusa, Luna Vachon, they they wrong era because women's wrestling was just I mean they 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 were good in like other parts of the world and other places, you know. What I mean, I mean they were they have to showcase their stuff, but when they came here, man, it was just terrible. Like they they made a belt for Medusa and she threw it in the trash, like because their women's division was so bad, because they didn't put her on, they never used it. This is what this is all the women's wrestling you saw would be like a Sherry Martell and Luna Bashan match, which is nothing wrong, but they're given what, probably four minutes of a pay per view to probably do their stuff. Right. The way she would paint the veins on the side of her face always freaked me out. But she would bam bam at this point. And then didn't she get a tattoo like that at one point? Yeah. Yeah, this is right before your sister Sherry started showing up in WCW with Harlem Heat. I love the old school WWF logo. What a white bit. 
This one was the, that, but this it was logo? on the on the background. They me? had it in, uh, yeah, yeah. But on the background, they had it in the neon, and it just looks so awesome. Look at Sherry just nice. taking look at, it. Look at that guy. Fucking, who is that guy? What was that move, Sherry? Just Sherry's gonna suplex her on. Oh, the, oh. Wait, how did her top come off? Yeah, right. I want to, we need to see more of that. Is this like the original Braun Panties match? Yeah. Look at that dude in the ring. This is like that jobber waiting to. Yeah, there's her thong. No, seriously, is this like the original Braun Panties match? Rob, oh god, that knee was fucking serious, dude. She, yeah. Oh, Luna backstage, mad as hell, bro. They went all in on each other. Whenever this match is, I'm, like, invested. I want to see them actually, like, in a match Luna with each got other. The, Luna got them chains hanging, bro. If it's not in this episode, chains. if this is leading up to them fighting in a pay-per-view, then I kind of want to throw that pay-per-view on and watch that as well. Well, yeah, King of the Ring 93. Just remember, that's what they're ta talking about here, the hype of King of the Ring. Right. Sister Sherry being like, don't forget about my cleavage. Jesus Christ. I wasn't going to say anything because I know you would. <laughs> yes, my, that's why somebody's got to – I mean, if you're watching along with us, you were thinking it too. <laughs> and now they zoom in on her face so that you remember that she's more than just some breasts. I'm surprised they did that. Yeah, I know. I actually am too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're right. leading up to King of the Ring. It's a qualifying match now, so who we got? Oh, Razor, Razor Ramon. Ramon. Here we go, Chico. Chico. Dun, 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 dun. I loved his theme music, man. So simple, but it was just like so, so chill. Here's a question for you. What's your favorite like theme song from this era? Um... Could be WCW too. Either either promotion, but like makes you think of that like early '90s, like not so far back that you're going into the '80s, but that very early '90s era. Uh, early '90s. Are, are you see? Because this era is probably Razor Ramon just sticks out in my head the mo one of the most. And that's you know, okay to say that. '90s. And, you know, of course, my Ultimate Warrior music and Sting's song is the one that I always remember because it was like the fake Ultimate Warrior song. Right. And uh, I always liked Big Van Vader's music back in the day. It's, I think it's like free public domain music now. That's a good call. I, uh, bum, 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 bum. And good call with Ultimate Warrior, too. I was thinking that. And one that always sticks out Bret for me. Bret Hart. Yep. It, I was going to say Bret Hart. Shawn Michaels. Because this is where he just – he had just started going singles and broke away from Marty Jannetty and had his, like, doing his own song here. It's just, it's just Martelli, Sherry Martell was his manager. But when I hear that song, I don't think of this era. I think of later. You well, that's, know? This is what I think of because that's when, like, he was really strippering it up. Like, during this guy this, – this was that guy, the heartbreak kid, where he was really a bad guy. Okay. Was, Fair yeah, enough. that was when the song was made to make you fucking hate him, you know? Right. Because like he just kicked Marty Jetty in the face, put him through the barber like the barbershop window, and then they repackaged him as the heartbreak kid, and he no longer was the rocker. And he came out singing his own fucking song, which the sister Sherry with him, or Sherry I, Martell. I want to pull a Shawn Michaels and sing my own intro for this podcast. We do. We were for a long time, and then we just stopped. No, but like for the act, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's true. We did. I what I keep tight. I keep saying it. I want to pull out the guitar and actually try to like make make a intro. I sent you the beat. Dude, maybe find some I, beats. I don't want to just use a pre-made beat. I want to make it from scratch. This is a do-it-yourself podcast. Then for fucking sure. do it yourself. Come on, bro. Let's do it. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Push. I'm pushing you to be better. You son of a Let's mother. Go. I I. I forget well, if this was 16 episodes in and you're going to keep, you're still talking about how you want to do something about the intro, do something about the intro. I'm sending you intro music and you're not using it. If you want to do something better than do something. Let's go. The only it, thing bro. about that rant that I heard was we're 16 episodes in. 
Yeah. And so, you keep, yeah. And you're still talking about how you want to make an entrance. Do it. And we started about a month ago. Yeah. And we're 16 episodes in. You're, yeah, that's exactly. You're, you're doing nothing but helping me out. Look at that old lady in the on the right. I'm doing it's nothing. Like, <laughs> look at that dead looking old lady there behind Earl Hebner. Holy shit. Razor Moe can't get him. There's an Ico Pro shirt in the front row. That guy's I'm trying to find. Oh, I see. I see. You look don't see. You know, it's funny. You always used to see like elderly women at wrestling shows. Back in they the always day. sat front row too. Yeah, you'd always see him. You don't see him anymore. There was one that was always at the shows in Asheville, and she was such a big part. Her and Ric Flair would always be like Ric yeah. Flair would always include her. Man, it was always like the thing. Her and Ric Flair would get into it. She would spit in his <laughs> face. She was giving him the finger. He was like yelling at her, and man, they loved that lady. And when she died, because I remember like she was at every WCW house event at the Civic Center, and when she died. WCW left her seats open and they did a, when Ric Flair came out, they did a, like, a, a 10 bell salute for her and shit. That's really cool. Yeah. So, like, I mean, the like, old ladies that were at the arena every time, they were a huge, huge part of the show, like, house show circuit thing. Man, wrestling these days, they focus too much on that 18 to 35 demo. They need to worry about, like, the, the 65 we don't have those. and we don't over. Have those anymore. They need the 65 and over demo. I want to see more. We don't have those anymore, man. I want to see more old ladies at wrestling shows. The product has changed, though. So we don't have that. The, the, they, they're not. They, you don't have that audience anymore. That's what I'm saying. They need to fix that. They need to bring that audience back. They need to reach out to the old ladies. Figure out why they've, lo- why they've gone. What's missing? Because the, the, from the wrestling's pro wrestling. different. This is not the same product anymore. Look at what we're watching. Well, what do we need to do to get back to those days where we had old ladies at ringside? Can't. It's not See, happen. you're sitting here. You're sitting here telling me to get off my ass, and then you come back with that negativity. That gosh darn negativity. Is obviously this product doesn't work anymore, and that's why they changed it to what they did, and they obviously can't go back to it. Or- I think you're just anti old lady, man. I think you, you don't want to be progressive enough to bring old ladies back to pro wrestling. It has nothing to do with it. It's just that type of the shit that they like is not what you can, what sells ratings and is on TV anymore. Or you'd see NWA power on TV and not on YouTube. No offense to that, but there you go. What if we got, Oh, that was it. The match is over. Yeah. He grabbed his butthole and he, uh, oh, got the we slid it in with the tights. I was so busy trying to ignore yeah, definitely your, slid it in with the tights. your ageism that I uh, I missed the, the ending. Oh, it's not ageism. It's just the fact that that kind of wrestling does not sell anymore. Or you'd see people watching ROH. Such a shame. More than like the, you know, 200,000 people that watch their show a week on, the, on, the, on every network or you know, Sinclair, but it's good for Sinclair probably, you know, but like still. I was going to say, don't hate on ROH. I love ROH. I'm not. I love ROH. I love them too. I watch it, but like it doesn't appeal to the mainstream wrestling audience, you know? You know, you know your doink. Is this the original doink? No, this is uh, not Matt. This is Matt Bourne, I think, here. This is Matt Bourne. No, no. Let me see which one this is. Let me look at this up because there's like four of them. So 1993 – Doink. Let's Google that. 1993 Doink would be. There were four of them. I thought there were only two. Did you look this up? Or are you ahead of me? No, no, I haven't looked it up. I, I thought you were. I mean, I I'm looking it up. Out, so. The ones that were Doink the Clown. There was. You keep talking. While I'm looking up the history. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's dead air. Oh, I'm yawning. That's bad. Um. So they, they always say, like, one doink was, like, more funny, another doink was more, like, sinister and dark. And then there was um, – Matt Osborne was – which was – I don't know which one is which. Like I said, a lot of it predates me. But you said there's four of them? There was – well, there was Steve Kern who did one who was the identical doink when, like, when Doink right. was wrestling doink. Okay. I remember that. Double doinks. Yeah. So first one, Matt, the original doink is Matt Osborne or Matt Bourne, who was also Big Josh in WCW. So he left WWF in 1990, December 1993. Uh-huh. So he's got that's him here. 
which is the original Doink, which was okay. Big Josh, WCW, Matt Bourne. So this is uh, the original Doink. Yeah, and he died in 2013. So oh. next, Steve Kern wrestled as the Illusion Doink at WrestleMania 9 and occasionally as the real Doink at house shows. So you have Steve Kern, who was also uh, – Okay. Uh, that so they overlap. Skinner. So that they overlapped also, each other. Yeah, Skinner. Remember Skinner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Steve Kern. So he would also be Doink at house shows. And when Doink, remember when Doink would face Doink and it was like the Spider-Man pointing at Spider-Man thing. Uh -huh. And then there was like evil Doink and friendly Doink. And that, yeah, that was him. So also though Steve Lombardi also wrestled as Doink at house shows and other WWF appearances after this, which was Brooklyn Brawler. So he was doing it. And then Ray Licamelli or Ray Apollo wrestled as Doink in WWF after Osborne left. Uh, and then there was Doinks uh, in other promotions. So we had Doink wrestling in NWA. We had Doink in Smoky Mountain wrestling. For, oh, here you go. You probably got a bunch of these old school. Oh, I've got them all right here. I've got that one. I don't have that Macho Man. Nah. I have that Hogan. I don't have Skinner. So I don't have that Macho. I need it. I'm all right here. Hang on. So if all mine are right here in the corner behind the big guys in the ring. Okay. But I've got tons of them. But yeah, We're coming down the – uh... We're coming down the home stretch here. We got the giant Gonzalez coming oh, out. I got, I got that one right here. Hang on. I'm pulling, I can pull him out. He's right here. See him? Yeah, you showed me that one before. Yeah. I love the I love the like the like the way they have hair on there. Oh, and this is for an interview? This is how they're going to end this? No, no. There's another match, isn't there? Nah, dude. There's only like five minutes left. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're going to set up this giant Gonzalez match at, at uh, King of the Ring. Dude, now, so you remember when he was in WCW? Who do you face in King of the Ring? I have no idea. Undertaker? Harvey Whippleman. Know. Harvey Whippleman's his manager, though. <laughs> Who's the announcer? That's Ray Rougeau, right? Yeah. That's not, that's not the Mountie. That's Ray Rougeau. Huh. That's his brother. So they're not still wrestling at this point? Uh, the Mountie is probably, but that's the, fa the fabulous Rougeaus are, oh, obviously, because yeah. that's Ray. It was Ray and Jacques, so that's Ray You're Rougeau. Right. But there's Harvey Whippleman doing this because you can't put the mic on Elegante, or I mean Giant Gonzalez. No. Yeah, because he was Elegante in WCW. Did you know he was also drafted by the Atlanta Hawks? Was he really? Yep, seven foot seven. Man, to have that – well, I don't know. From Argentina. It's it's funny how when you're that tall, you think it would just be. But he's so got easy. pubes. Why do they got pubes on? Look at the, the fake pubes on his outfit. Did you see that? I mean, you got to bush it up, dude. What else? But he's got there? like the stomach hair all the way down to his fucking taint. Look. That's what I mean. You gotta you gotta cover it somehow. What are you gonna just put a? Are you gonna airbrush a, a John on there? He could smooth saddle him like a fucking Barbie doll or a Ken doll. I mean, what's he gonna he put clothes smooth, on? Smooth saddles, bro. What are you gonna put? Him, what are you gonna put him in a banana hammock? He's wearing shoes. You get. <laughs> he's gonna wear shoes, but like. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you can have your dick out, but put your shoes on. Yeah, right. <laughs> look, they even put. They even put. Like, look at his shoes. Like, I mean, they're like right before I said they actually show his shoes. I. uh... I was me, I was so confident that I, I could just mess with you until you mentioned the shoes. I was like, yeah, they, dude. Dude, I'm like, like this whole <laughs> get up is not making sense. Yeah, that's it. it. It ends with him. Nick, man, you picked a good one out. That's it, man. That's an interesting episode. I liked it, Nick. That's man. some grade A U.S. prime beef, WWF. Wow. So that's it, guys. Thank you, you so think? much, Nick, for – well, th first of all, thank you so much, Nick, for, for the recommendation. And yeah. uh, I, I probably hope... would – I will say I would not have watched that episode of Superstars probably without Nick suggesting me to watch that episode. And I hope that we didn't get too far off topic, but, Nick, if we did, that's kind of on you because that's what we do here is we get way too far off topic. <laughs> yes, no, dude, if you listen, the, no, none of these guys stay on topic. Like, we're talking about stuff that's happening based on what we're seeing. So it was, you know, we were on topic enough. I'm not arguing with our this at all. This is good. We did good work.
Nick picked a great time frame. Nick picked a great time frame for for me personally because I love watching stuff from this era right now. I, I feel like I go through phases in what eras I need to want to ju- dive into, and right now that's kind of where I'm at. Is the early early '90s, like '90 90 to '95. Oh, well, we've got '92 Halloween Havoc coming up. I know. That's Sometime what I voted soon. for. That's the one I voted for too, so I'm happy about it. We well, when do we want to do this? We got to do that one soon, man, because we got that one. The, the audience is waiting on that one. This is Hall- a surprise for everybody. Halloween Havoc. We just started uh, last or earlier tonight, and we had some dif- difficulties. So, so we're gonna do that one over again because we only were four minutes in before I fucked it up. We'll try to get like uh, we'll try to do that this weekend. We'll put that out this weekend, and then okay. um, hopefully that'll be up. By, you know, like I said, by the end of the weekend, and we'll have our poll for next week. And we haven't picked the the four that'll be options yet. But if you go over to us on Twitter, again, you can follow us at Dom underscore Malin. And you can follow Cass at C-A-S-S-H-O-O-O-L-E. Uh, but we put, the, we put the Twitter polls up at Body Slam underscore pod. That's where you find us. That's the main stay, the main Twitter account. And uh, you can also catch all of our breaking news at the Big Kahuna itself, Body Slam Net at Twitter. And uh, we're also on Facebook. Like you said, we're also on uh, Instagram. You can catch us there. But we love the, the World Wide Web for the website, bodyslam.net. It's oh, so- yeah, of course. Obviously. That's where you go for, for everything. And we got some other great podcasts in the Body Slam family now um, just starting up. Uh, this is Our House podcast with uh, recent recent guests on the show and big big uh, contributors. I, to I Body feel Slam. like we inspired that show. Uh, Faz and, and Cass. Cass. Faz and Chris Dietz. Uh, so I'm excited to, to have that uh, as another option that we can listen to as well as having them back on as guests. And your, your boy Tove, his show. And, and Tove and, and, uh, and uh, our boy Mikey Butler, they have their show that's starting up. I think they have a few episodes in the bank now. Um, yeah. The Jabronis. The Jabronis. They got a new one, I think, dropping tomorrow or tonight, right. maybe. Some, around the time that this one will be up. And, uh, oh, my God, I'm blanking. There's one other one. Um, uh, we got – there's that The Hop, I think, that one. Yes, with, uh, The Hop. So, old dude, and then there's uh, I think there's something else too. Is that? Is there something th- else coming up too? I think so. I don't know if I I might have said something too soon. We'll figure that one out later. <laughs> but for now, that's what we've got pushing. I might have, I might have said something before. I should have said something. You're breaking your own breaking news. But anyway, so long story short, we got a whole crew of people that you can listen to with uh, you know, different different tastes. Every episode is every show is a little different, and our show is very big into user fee or uh, listener feedback. So if you have any recommendations for future watch alongs, uh, if you have any recommendations for future interviews, people you want us to reach out to, uh, please reach out to us on Twitter or any other platform and, and give us your feedback. But Nick, yeah. thank you and so much for the recent. If you're feedback. a wrestler. Come to us too. Feel free. If you want us to interview you, you can always do that. Reach out to us. That's also a thing too. So. so it's uh it's officially 2 a.m i think we should wrap this up you're wrapping it we're wrapping let's, it up uh let's let's take them out I thought with we, our, all, we always wrap it up right always wrap it up but let's take it out with our award-winning outro buddy you ready are you ready podcast 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 the cast down the push solid bye